Hi guys, I hope you're doing well. The video of today is about King and it has been a complicated one. It was at the original request I got on YouTube um, in the comment section. And if you have any match that you would like me to review, just let me know, even if it is your matches actually. But let's go now with this match and it was not easy at all. And especially because this map is a very good map for King because the floor break is basically a natural extension for any juggle for King. King's player love to start with a jumping knee. He didn't do that here, but AOP is also working very well against grabs. That's not a good wall splat and I cannot get a big extension here. It's not a lot of damage, but it is still a good start. Big whiff. It was very dangerous to punish it with tight step three, but I can get a lot of damages here. The run is almost settled. I just need a good Okizeme and I got it so far. Need to be very careful with the rage and I blocked it. But he is on a frame advantage and takes advantage of that to get a grab. If you cannot break that throw, there is a good way to reduce the damages at the end. I will show it afterward, but here I failed and I got full damages. You can see that I was still laying on the ground in the end. I just need a poke and I got it thanks to that big whiff. That jump that King did in the end, it's quite complicated to deal with and distance is very important. But now we are going with a round two and we are both zoning, patient. My opponent is not sidestepping right and that's why it will lead me to go for wild running three. Hard to imagine that I could whiff from here, right? And yet, he could make the space. I did a whiff but he didn't punish that. And so now I'm taking full advantage of the close range. Here King's player love at mid range to jump. And that's why this is very efficient, the upward four. I did the wrong juggle losing both the wall splat and the throw break. He immediately get a second opportunity and this time it's not on me if it doesn't work. A typical Okizeme for King and that's well played. It's the beginning of a comeback but nice transition to SGS. It's a nice way to punish that low, but you need to do it very early. And the beginning of the third round, big whiff, and this mid forces you to stay in crutch, so your opponent has a guaranteed throw afterward, but you can break it with either one and two. This is a one throw break, but I failed. But it was basically a 50-50, now the wild running grab, it's a one plus two. Nice break, and I get immediately a nice situation. That's not a proper wall splat or wall combo, but still I get some damages. And again, big pressure with the wall. I can go in AOP, but again, my opponent is quite good at making distance. Here, I wouldn't think that I would whiff, but he avoided a big 50-50 situation. Now the pokes, and I am too far for him to get a guaranteed grab. Immediately takes distance. I'm hoping for him to jump, but it didn't work so far. And now he could intercept my pokes. That's a very bad situation, has his rage. Here again, it's a 50-50 situation, one or two. You cannot see it, you need to guess, and I got lucky. The wild running grab, and it's a one plus two here again. And I'm breaking it, and that's the only reason why I'm still alive in this round. He can make a lot of distance, and make me whiff. He punish it with a low, and that's two, one. He will start the next round with a jump, and that's way more complicated to deal with that in loops. I will show it at the end of the match, but for now, we have a big distance. He's going for a wild running, I'm immediately going in AOP because I do not want him to grab me. I do believe that the wall is too far so I'm going for an Okizeme and I got a lot of damages. It will still be hard to get a proper wall splat but I got it. That's not a proper wall combo though. Immediately going for the poke. He got rid of the wall pressure but still it's a big lead for me. He got me to whiff again and that's a nice punish with the rage. This is the beginning of comeback. That was very risky for me, skipping the frame advantage and a close range in order to be able to grab me and he got it. Now the wall with the extra damages. A classic Okizeme for King and he got it again. The wall splat and a lot of damages. Even if I went in his back, this will hit you. It's very complicated to deal with this Okizeme. He's starting immediately with a shoulder power crush, which is I guess to avoid any AOP. It's minus 12, so you can finish it with a shoulder as well. Or you can show your opponent who is the king at grabbing. Or should I say the queen? Yes, I think I should definitely say the queen. He unfortunately did not grab him. He did punish it properly, but the grab after the jab was very risky for him with the roll. And I can get almost perfect here. There is a lot to say about what happened in this first match. And I will start by sharing with you some tips I found by reviewing this match. So if ever a king player grabs you and start to turn you around like this, what you need to do is to put your fingers on one, two, three and four, which means your two hands. And at the moment where kings will throw you, just here you will press one, two, three, four as fast as possible. So the name of that throw is giant swing and we refer to it as giant swing because it's way too complicated to pronounce this input. And let me show you what I just explained. So if you cannot break this throw, which is a one break, your opponent will throw you away and it is 65 damages. 
So the best option is of course to break it with 1 at the very beginning and to do this animation. Otherwise, you should just press 1 at the very moment you are hitting the ground, but it's very complicated, it's uh, just frame. And another option to seriously improve your success rate is to press 1, 2, 3, 4 at the very moment your opponent is throwing you and it's working quite well. So you can reduce damages to 45, which could be eventually a lifesaver. LDS Upward 4 is very useful to avoid the jumps, but here I needed to do LDS 1-4, but I will explain it at the end of the video. We'll review at the end of the match how to deal with that low, because this is a very risky option that I took, and the transition to LDS is actually a very good option against jumps, and I will show you in the end why, as well as how to deal with the different Okizeme situations that we faced. But it was a long enough break so far, so let's go for the second match instead. And we are back on this map, and you will see that at the very beginning I was believing my opponent would go for a power crush again, but he didn't, and he went for a throw instead, which is the arm breaker, and it's very, very powerful. I will share with you a strategy to get rid of this one, or actually to reduce the damages, but so far it's not a good start, and I'm trying to get rid of the pressure with some pokes, and it's going quite well. Now my opponent is very close to the wall, and I'm trying to put him under pressure with AOP, but again, he created a lot of space, just enough for me to whiff, and that's a nice whiff condition. 1-0 already, and now we are going for the round 2, immediately creating space, and I'm whiffing my wall running again. Now the pokes, I can get him to float, but I will not get a lot of damages from that, that was not a good transition. Nice low parry, and we will go to the next floor, might as well be able to take advantage of the wall, and yes, he got it, good wall splat, nice wall combo. The Okizime, I mid life from a low parry, that's really good. The poor crush giving a wall splat, but he can get damages from that. I'm in a very bad situation, I'm cornered. Only a fourth of my life remaining, I need to take a risk, and that's what I did. Now I go for the full extension to get away from the wall. I'm trying Anokizeme, but it's not working. Punished me, grabbed me, no break. Two rounds in a row that I didn't do any break, and two rounds in a row that I lose. Now the round three, and I need to wake up. I will start the round a bit more aggressive. But that's a big whiff, a stupid one, and he gets full juggle. Oh, he dropped it, but I'm close to the wall, I'm trying to push him away. My opponent do not step a lot, so up forward 3-4 is quite efficient if I do not whiff. And he got the lunch on now, I'm in a very bad situation, I'm just about to die. I can get up, but I will need a huge comeback. It would be good to have him whiff a bit as well, so I'm trying to use link movement. And it pays off, but it's not a lot of damages I can get from that. I get a big whiff, but I did not finish it properly, I should have used my rage. Anyway, AOP saving me, it's a 2-1, and here we go for the round 4. Using up forward 3 plus 4 again, which is kind of good, because first of all it's a good starter, but here King loves to start with throws. Finally got a country, trying to reach the wall, to have a proper wall splat, break the floor, then good wall splat again, a lot of damages, with mid life already. Now going for the Okizeme, nice block but bad punish, I can get the wall splat again, unfortunately the floor won't break. The rage is that the beginning of a comeback. The rage will leave me more or less mid life, and I am still close to the wall. The grab, now the wall splat. Breaking the floor, was flat again. That's definitely a good beginning of a comeback. The grab again and no breaks at all. I can finally escape, now the pokes, and I can close it. 2-2, two, two, that was very close. And the final round for this game. I was hoping for a grab, but it didn't come. Now he got me with the lows. Finally a grab stack break. Keeping distance, my opponent with, but no punish on that. Still I get a juggle. Can I reach the wall? No, it's not a proper wall splat still some damages. My opponent failed to punish AOP for 3, that's good. Ah, not this time. He didn't take advantage of the wall splat, now the Okizeme I can get rid of his pressure, still I'm close to the wall. A good launcher, I need to work on my wall carry, but I fail. And my opponent takes advantage of that. With his rage, can he do a comeback from here? I was expecting for him to come with a grab, but he did the low instead. Now he does the grab and got me again. No breaks. 
your keys they may and you got me. That's three two, well played. If you do not break any throw, you cannot expect to win a lot of matches against a good king player, I guess. We will go directly to the third match and we will review it all afterward. Still on the same map and you will see at the very beginning up plus three is not a good way actually to deal with grabs. Uh, what I should have done is up forward three because up plus three needs a counter hit to get a full juggle and here you don't get it with a grab. This is minus 14 but I didn't know it, should have finished it with three. Now the lows, it got me with the mid, that's finishable with the shoulder, proper finish this time. I get a good juggle, that's not too bad. I am missing almost all my wall carries, that's not good at all. Because I end up with a wall pressure, I can interrupt him with back one, the rage. I anticipated a grab and I guess he did a miss input here. There are different ways to deal with that string and I will show it to you afterwards. I can push him away, again making me whiff on my wall running, but this time I can break the throw. My opponent is literally against the wall so he cannot make me whiff this time and I get the round with a poke and we go for the round two. Keeping distance at the beginning, and it is way too easy to see my wild running coming. Nicely done from him, now he's got the floor breaks, maybe the wall splat, yes, wall combo, no. That's a miss input for me and I cannot get the full juggle unfortunately, but still I get the damages. Trying the same string again because it has been working, not this time. I should have punished this whiff with RGS4, but never mind, I like to keep it crazy. Big whiff, he can launch that, but I'm backward so he doesn't get a lot of damages. I cannot punish it this way, the grab, I can break it, big launcher, that will be it, it's a 1-1, one, one. that was a weird round in many ways, and here we go for the third one. Fight. Keeping distance the grab, it's a no immediately, here I thought he would do the mid but he didn't, so I'm whiffing, now the Okizeme got full juggle, floor break, wall splat, wall combo, getting up, immediately a grab and again, wall splat, floor break. Wall splat, wall combo, he missed it, not this time. I finally broke a throw, which gives me an opportunity to do comeback, immediately he's launched. Now I will be going for the low pokes, unfortunately the second one is not hitting. Here I was baiting a jump from him and I got it at the second up forward 4, so here the juggle is correct with the down plus 3, 4. I cannot reach the wall, so I will go instead with the Okizeme, it didn't work. Waking up immediately with back 3 plus 4, and I got hit by the first attack but not the second one which gives me the round. I got a bit lucky here and here we go for the fourth round. A trade and he got the counter hit so he can go up to five lows and the mid is guaranteed afterward. I will show you how to deal with it. He missed the juggle hopefully and it's my turn to launch him. I can reach the wall so we go for the Okizeme and try to send him back to the wall but unfortunately the direction is not the good one. So I'm going for the Okizeme again but he blocked it. Now the throw, I didn't break it. Is it the end of the round? No. Still have a chance. Nice block. He can interrupt me and get the round. I was hoping for him to do a jab, but it didn't work out. And now the last round for today. Big whiff and nice finish. The Okizeme didn't got me. The pushback of while standing 4 creating space for a whiff and I can launch him. Unfortunately I will not be able to read the wall. I'm trying the same thing again, but this time it's not working anymore and he punishes me. That is the good way to deal with that string. Big lunch. Now, just need to work on the juggle to have a proper wall splat. It's not happening. The rage is that again the beginning of a comeback. The Okizeme will be important. Last time he came with a low instead of a grab that I was expecting. What about it now? A low again. I got it. 3-2. This was very, very close. And we will do a full review of everything that happened and there is a lot to say. So first with the throw and the situational throw. We have been talking earlier today about the giant swing and actually when king is back to wall, get ready to press 1 to avoid the giant swing. Otherwise king will throw you against the wall increasing the damages. You cannot reduce the damages anymore and on top of that you will get up with the wall pressure. Now if Ling is back to wall you should be ready to press 1 plus 2 in order to avoid him to have a proper wall splat and you know floor break, wall splat again and so on. The best way to deal with scrap is of course to return the reflex by seeing which arm your opponent is using to grab you, but if you can do that these tips might help you a lot. On top of that it is not possible to break everything on a reflex, for example the mid throws. So we saw that king can force you into a mid position and then grab you afterward. 
here actually it wasn't a mid throw but anyway if you have very very good reflexes what you can do is actually watch closely here king is grabbing you by the back then you need to press 2 to avoid it if you see king grabbing you by the head then you need to press 1 so the timing is even shorter to press the button when you see what is happening but you can still improve a bit your success rate by watching closely but still since most people are struggling with regular grab it's really complicated to do that not mentioning online with latency and so on when in training mode I could barely reach a success rate higher than 50%. Now, when you are on the ground, there is nothing else you can do than pressing 1 or 2. It's totally random. You cannot know at all what your opponent is gonna do. It's really a 50-50. When we talk about king and throws, the most important is maybe to know how to deal with the long throws. And one that we saw during the match is the arm breaker. So you can see at the very beginning that king starts by breaking your arm. This is arguably the most scary long throw of King, which you can see by watching into Ling's eyes. The King player will basically have different options that are doing a lot of damages. And depending on the option that the King player will choose, you will have to press different buttons, but you cannot know, you need to guess. So I will show you in details how it works, and give you a proper strategy to avoid big damages, because you might not want to start a round with only a third of your life. So first, let's have a look at the different options a king player will have when starting with an arm breaker. Here you can see that there are three options. So from arm breaker, your opponent can go to triple arm breaker, head jammer, or chicken wing face lock. If he goes for triple arm breaker, he cannot do anything else afterward. It's the end of the throw for him. However, if he goes for the head jammer, he will then be able to finish it with a struggle combination. Finally, if he chooses the chicken wing after the arm breaker, he has two additional options. But first, let's have a look at the triple arm breaker. So this one is guaranteed. If the king player decided to use this one, there is nothing you can do but hit 50 damages. This being said, 50 damages is not that much. Even Link can do that. Now, the second option, the king player will have is a head jammer, and the head jammer can be followed up only by the struggle combination. So it's a separate branch which deals a bit more damages, and it is basically the beginning of the mix up for king because if you want to stop it here, you need to press 2, or maybe should I say to spam 2. This being said, this branch leads to 65 damages only, and I say only because compared to what we saw before, it's nothing. Then, if the king player goes for the chicken wing face lock, he has two additional possibilities and we'll see how to deal with them, but first I will show you what it is. So here is the Dragon Sleeper, which is the first option, and it deals 70 damages. Now the last one that we saw during the match, which is the Rolling Death, and which deals a lot of damages compared to all the other options. So it is basically what you want to avoid at all costs, and it's time now to share with you guys what I believe you should do when you see King grabbing your arm and turning back. One important thing to note is that if you press 1 plus 2 at the very beginning, when you see King grabbing your arm, you can avoid the two most damageful options of King. And you can still avoid the most damageful one by pressing 2 afterward should you not succeed with 1 plus 2. So if we sum it up, you need to press 1 to avoid the grab at the beginning, then 1 plus 2. It's very time sensitive, so you can fail it. And if you fail the 1 plus 2, you can still press 2 afterward, and you will not get more than 40 damages. So if you apply that, the worst situation for you would be that the king player opt for the second option that we saw before, and should he do that, he will get 65 damages from it. So now we will review king's laws, and as you will see, they can be very annoying at first, but in the end, they are not that good. They are actually quite bad. So here I'm showing you a few solutions to deal with full crutch down plus one plus two, the most important is to know that you do not want to block punish it because the reward is not here for you. What I did during the match to go in early as to avoid it and punish it needs to be done at the very beginning of the animation, so you should mainly use it when you believe that your opponent will attack you this way, like as an Okizemi. Another law that is not that easy to deal with when you don't know, and that is quite important for King, is down plus 3 plus 4. It has contrary properties, but the main reason why it's complicated to deal with is that you will be locked in the string if you are pressing down. You need to press down back. It is very important and it makes no sense, so you just need to know that. The last part of the string is a mid that you can launch punish. If there is no counter hit, your opponent will have the choice between doing one low, two lows or three lows followed by the mid. Here you can see that I was in training mode and I basically selected my opponent to do the three of them randomly and it's possible to see the mid coming. 
and to react properly, but it's quite hard. And you know how it is, if you have some difficulties to do it in training mode offline, then online it would be super super complicated. If you see the mid coming, the best way for Link to deal with it is to use AOP down 1 plus 2. Anyway, if a king player is using this string, what is important is that as from the second low you can block it, even on counter it. And then if your opponent goes for 5 lows or for the mid, then launch it. Do not let them get away with it. Another law that can be tricky to block punish is down back 4. As you can see, most while standing or other options won't work to get a float, so what you need to do is a very fast down plus 3. It's very not common, so you really need to get used to that. So if we look backward, all the laws that we have been seeing so far need a specific knowledge to deal with it properly. For example, the first one is a seeable law, but you cannot block it, or if you block it, you cannot block punish it properly. The second one, you cannot block it with down, you need down back to block it. And this one, you need to use down plus 3, 2 to make it float instead of while sending 2 that we use generally speaking. But if you know this, basically none of them have a good risk reward. So now we will move to the next one and the next one, hopefully we can launch it as we do usually speaking with a proper hop kick. And this one is down back 3. It is a contact launcher, but you can launch it on block. So here again, the risk reward is not good at all for the king's player. Yet, we saw all the good lows of king. So basically you can say that there is not a single good low. Now, there is a last one that is worth mentioning, and this is down to 3. It has a proper tracking, but you can still step it to the left. It's a poke, but on hit, it gives the king player a frame advantage of one frame, but you can punish it with a while standing four, just be aware of the one frame advantage. Now we will review all the mids and highs that we saw during the match that you can block punish, and the first one is down plus one plus two. It is launch punishable, so do not let them get away with it. The next one is full crunch two, you can launch punish it with three. Then we have up forward four, which is a very powerful move for king because it beats AOP, However, you can step it to the right and to the left, it has a bit more tracking to the left, so it also has a very poor range, so you should mainly try to whiff punish it, but if ever you block it, you can punish it with back 4 4. We saw two moves that are shoulder punishable during the match, it's 1 plus 2, 1 plus 2, this one is one of the very few that block punish properly, and is armor move. Now we saw a few moves that you can duck as well, the first one we will see is back plus 1, 2, you can punish it on block with back 4 4, but you should try to duck the second high and then to launch it. The next one is turn forward 2 1, very good move for King because it beats AOP 2. You can duck it and then launch it. And this is what you need to do to have your opponent stop using it because you cannot block punish it. Now we will review down forward 4 3. It's something that I already discussed in my tutorial when to use AOP. This one is a bit specific, it's really a like. Um, back 4-3 of Dragonov, but you cannot launch it with AOP. You need to duck and then use up forward 3. Here, if you look at my inputs, you will see that I was ordering Ling to use AOP, it wasn't working. That's it for the attacks we saw that you can duck, and now we will have a look at King's jumps. The first thing is about AOP up forward 4, up forward 4. I already explained in the game's match, here I was hitting King at the second up forward 4, and I cannot use the same juggle when I'm hitting King at the first. So to make it clear, when you hit King at the first up forward 4, you can go with RDS 1-4, but when you hit King at the second only, you should use Dan plus 3-4. So this is something that you need to know when you use AOP up forward 4, but now when you are mid-range with a king player that will jump on you, what you should do is go in RDS. It will be working very very well because you can launch your opponent quite easily, or maybe should I say to get him float quite easily, because it's not that easy to get him float when you have to use forward forward 3, but forward forward 3 will still be what you will need to use when your opponent is jumping just straight like this, and it's not easy at all. Going to RDS also works against the unblockable, but not against up forward plus 1 plus 2. So you really need to see if your opponent is going high in the air or not. If he's going high, then you can use RDS. If he is not, you should not move, you should just block it. Now you can see that it has a poor left tracking, so if you anticipate a up forward plus 1 plus 2, just step left. 
So you really need to train and to put all these jumps into the system in training mode and then just try to recognize quickly if it's a high jump or not. It's possible but it's not easy so you really need to train for that. Now there are two more things that I need to say about these jumps. If your opponent is jumping backward there is not much you can do about it. And if ever your opponent is using jumps when you are at close range, which should never happen, you should use down forward 2-1 when your opponent is using the unblockable. And if ever your opponent is using the other jump, then you should just use down plus 3-4 or even better walk through and then use RDS down plus 3-4. But again, they should not use it at close range, it will not happen. Now the Okizeme. We saw my opponent using down plus 3 plus 4 when I was close to the wall and actually it's a very good one because if you're not moving it will lock you here at the second low. So now everything is guaranteed. So basically what you need to do is to avoid the second one. Then you can use a hop kick to make sure to avoid the third one. So here it goes. If your opponent is doing three lows, you avoid the second one, you do a hop kick. If your opponent is doing only two lows, you avoid the second one and you do a hop kick. It still works because the mid doesn't have a very good tracking. Now, if your opponent is doing only one low, which rarely happens, you do not have a granted follow-up. But what you can do eventually is to do a grab because your opponent will not have time to attack you in the meantime. Maybe he will duck it, maybe he will break it. But you know, generally speaking, I think that they will just eat it. And we finally arrive at the end of this match review, it was a very long one. I will just talk about King's special wake up that we saw and my opponent got me during the match. There are two main points that you need to know about that. First of all, on block, it's highly punishable by Ling because she can launch it with one down plus two and the follow up. So do not let them get away with it. Now, if your opponent hit you at the first attack, then you can get your opponent to float but I strongly do not advise you to do it because from time to time it's possible that your opponent will hit you first and as you could see the float is not great, you do not have a full extension. So the risk reward is not here for you and what I advise you to do is basically to just roll and stay grounded. This way you're sure that you will avoid your opponent's attack. This was a very, very long video, a lot of things to say now. I hope that you will not feel locked anymore nor scared when you're playing a Kings player because you have some good tools to deal with your opponent. I might do a full anti-King tutorial, but I hope that this video will help you. In that case, do not hesitate to like, share and subscribe. It really helps. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.